Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Disco Elysium. Uh, now if you remember last time, we, uh, we've we tried a couple of times uh, to punch our way past this rather big guy at the gate. And we, you know, we had pretty good odds to do so last time. It was 83% chance of success, but somehow we managed to fail. Um, so I guess we're going to go and follow some other leads today. And I want to head down to uh, the southwest sort of area of the map. We haven't been there yet. It's kind of beyond... Um, uh, beyond Lieutenant Kim's car and that sort of area. I'd like to find a bag at some point as well, just so I can start collecting bottles for a bit more cash, as we're going to have to come up with, I think, is it $10 to have a bed for the night tonight? Right, so we're kind of in the area now where... Actually, I don't think we've talked... haven't talked to these old geezers yet, have we? Let's go over here, first of all. Let's already see some stuff down there. Let's have a chat to these guys. Nope, I don't know what that was. Doesn't need to be a struggle. I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Talk to Angry Hog René first. Well, sandwiches are important. Do I get that thing back if I move over here? Oh, here we go. What's this? Right. Important info there. I don't think we've been up there either. Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? This one's still chewing on his sandwich. Look in his hand, going into his mouth. Oh, the sandwich. sandwich. It's hauntingly beautiful. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a <laughs> ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. I mean, obviously we're going to start throwing balls and wreck their That's game. The this is the jerk cop playthrough, Don't after even all. Don't waste your breath asking about the game. <laughs> They're way past their prime. Well, we've got 97% chance of success. I mean, we have to, don't we? Grab the ball and show them how it's done. <laughs> He's limbering up like a shot putter. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. Be the ball. <laughs> Shot putting. <laughs> Take that. Not a weak triceps, that's for sure. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. A man his age getting worked up like that? Better watch that blood pressure. I'm sensing anger. I don't understand why. We vandalized our game, son. We can't flip a tonk with five bull. I thought it was shot, but... Well, it damn well isn't. <laughs> it's a tonk. You ruined a tonk game. We want our bull back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. Listen, guys, the bull's gone. I've got a murder to solve, all right? I know usually you try and accept all the tasks and do it to get experience and stuff, but there's no way I'm getting that bull back as a jerk cop. A fine example you are setting here today, officer. I will remember this. Custom will too. It's okay, officer. Forgotten completely. It was my bull, and I have a spare. Everything is good, and we're ready to assist any way we can. He's trying to avoid conflict at any cost. The lieutenant says nothing, but his face is rigid. For that. It seems he does not. It's an all time low with kids. <laughs> I guess he didn't approve of us shot putting their ball into the lake. 
The lieutenant says nothing, but his face is rigid. He seems he does not approve of your athletic displays. <laughs> Uh, we'll do this in order. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly jerky Unfortunately, here. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. In not the nails. The union is the law. So can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops. Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. So again, you don't know if anything. If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I'm an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. You seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. What crater? I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. Very interesting. Why? Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. The communists, wasn't that a group? That was a pop group in the 80s, Communist, wasn't it? Communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Did you use artillery fire? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. <laughs> I'd bomb this place too. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They didn't do it because they didn't like it. They had to soften the commies up first. Yes, the military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground. Where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Mm, nice. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Is that why everything's so bombed out? Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. He approves of this radical approach knows it was necessary. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your home damn fault. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players of the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding them. What do you think? Okay, we've got a bit of a choice here. So that's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for hard working class to take over. Foreign powers, powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Uh, probably the first one. That seems like a quite a jerky thing to say. Preposterous! Surely you don't mean it. I'm just sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those commie hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking my piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal, or even if that damn clan Fuisel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. But this is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Uh, okay, let's conclude this. The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? 
they forgotten all. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's Boris when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Okay, <laughs> so composure check, which we don't have a lot of. Uh, there's only 17% chance. Um, and we get a minus one modifier as well for throwing the ball into the sea. <laughs> so I don't, uh, it's a white check, so I don't think anything would happen of us failing it. So we might as well give it a go. All you observe yeah. is a veteran refusing to <clears throat> let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip the Fifth before him. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule and to mourn. There's something he missed. You will get to it. Okay, what about the statue? Ah, yes. King Philip III on his steed, a reminder of what Revachol once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant, who emptied <laughs> the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. Cocaine. Sounds like a nice guy. <laughs> Cocaine -um. sounds like our kind of king. <laughs> and just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. What was that about cocaine? Oh, Paul Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. Ah, his egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine for clarity of vision, to aid in their work. Regnum cocaineum. Revachol's finest years. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. I'm satisfied with this explanation. <laughs> of course. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Philippe Zitter was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was able to connect with higher realms. Such responsibility requires a boost every now and then. I sometimes need one too. Please, officer, don't encourage him. Do spare us the cocaine fairy tales. The RCM isn't interested in them. Yes, indeed. We're not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. Right. Okay, I think that's it for here. Just gonna have a little look around this side. Hmm, don't know where he's going. Let's look at this first. Uh, we haven't been at this looks like a bookshop, haven't been up here. Have a look at the uh, stands first, and then we'll talk to the person out front. Mm. <laughs> that seems quite trashy ones. A book about pate. Okay. Boyadero. Don't know what that is. A Francogenarian hardbody. Okay. Is this a kid? Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. I am the law. I know, sir. She stomps her feet to feel warmer. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of it's store is this anyway? Store, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. <laughs> we failed encyclopedia. Uh, wow, yeah, we don't have, we don't have a lot of uh, intelligence uh, points at the moment. What's a board game? Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. What's a book? That is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. What's a, a postcard? postcard <laughs> is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. My hmm. pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Uh, ask okay, some questions? Sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. 
Say, child, you wouldn't happen to know a good fridge, would you? A fridge? Yeah, like a really, like a big, big fridge a cop would put a dead body into. <laughs> you mean like the ice bear fridge? Man, that's scary. Ice oh, what's bear that? fridge? Yes, like a bear, but white. There's a fridge below the building in the basement with red glowing eyes. I went back there once, behind the bookstore. Oh, that's interesting. Mum doesn't want me to go there anymore. Not that I want to. It was pretty scary. And there's a big yes. fridge. How do I get inside? Um, that's a problem. The only way in is through the bookstore, but my mum is pretty strict about not letting anyone in. But I don't know. You're a policeman. Maybe you can convince her somehow. Anyway. Sounds like a plan. Uh, let's not worry about any of these. I want to go and see if we can get to that fridge. Here we go. A few things to look at first. Let's just uh, do a quick spin round. Molten candy. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundal somewhere. This is entirely, completely <laughs> you. You have found the right books. Storekeep, tell me about the Muscle Man books. Oh, Man from Kjelmdal. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Sounds good. Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Sounds like us. Which one should I start with? It doesn't with? matter. They're all the same. However, the customer is always right, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Kjelm Dalaman, the man from Kjelm Dal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Oh, we don't have enough money. Maybe we'll come back here at some rows point. Rows and rows of Kjelm Dalaman blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Kjelm Dal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Kjelm Dal. Return to Kjelm Dal. And the Solipsistic. Man from Kjelm Dal and the Kjelm Dal. <laughs> Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyondal and the sages at the right, end right, I think we've had enough of that now. crabs are worse than they sound. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyondal novels. Oh, okay. Do any of these books call out to me? Let's try that. A twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Oh, what your is it? Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular Man from Hyondal in chains. Kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. Between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyamdala and the Devil Woman. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyamdala novels. Okay, I think we've exhausted that till we've got some more money in our pockets. Sports magazines. Okay. A small mountain of colourful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. An What's endless Rao? variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. Uh, a bit like D&D, maybe? There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a pick-your-path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. There's a box that says... We're out. Third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. Yeah, I don't have that. Nonsense for anemic Dino clouds. Uh, okay. So our lack of money is starting to be a bit of a hindrance, isn't it? Now, let's talk to the shopkeeper. Maybe she'll let us into the back. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. 
Before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavour. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Son, you got destroyed there. <laughs> what an idiot you are. I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high pitched as if to give it more penetration. Well let's just let's just be direct and try and get to the a cellar. Fridge? No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? Who's the girl? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Ooh, I've wanted to say yes, of course, but obviously the jerk option has to be to lie about it and get her in trouble. So no, she was definitely slacking off. Oh, shameful girl. What is she up to this time? Oh, I can't really escalate that. I was wondering if perhaps she'd run out to speak to the girl and I could go in through the, through the, through the back, but it doesn't seem to be an option. Uh, rather than back down, let's talk about something else. Goodness. You were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back. All right, there. I don't the think smiles and nods. we're going to have much success there. Let's just um, we'll try going through the curtain, see what happens. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. What's the trinket first? You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. I mean, obviously we're just going to yank them open here. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Okay, I do want to get in there. Let's see what we can do. Um, tell her we're a police officer. We could maybe say that... Um, it's more of a, psycho a psychic edge. She seems to have put some store in that sort of thing. Or just do it anyway. <laughs> uh, let's um, let's try this one. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear All right. sir. Let's just say we're a police Why? officer. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I am sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly, not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. Well, I think we're just going to no. do it. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Lies. Rip them open. <laughs> yeah, instead. I mean, if we get the curtains, option to. Tattered with age and covered in dust hang before you, as if taunting you. We're going to do it. Of course we're going to do it. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets, your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Okay, nothing seems to have jumped out to kill us. What have we got in here? Okay, seems to be a portrait of Madonna over there. Oh, it's a man. Vaguely androgynous. Fair enough. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped 
trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What if you just break it down? Okay. I wonder if we can maybe get a positive modifier if we think about it first. That's right. Take in your surroundings. You need to have a solid ground and a proper posture if you want to succeed. All right, check our posture. Steady breathing. Solid core. You've got this. With one shoulder forward, you're ready to smash into the door like a battering ram. Check our surroundings. The room is dimly lit and littered with old barbershop rubbish. But the path to the door is clear. What about the door? It's made of a solid block of wood, but it has stood there for ages. The hinges are old and coated with a carmine layer of rust. It should be doable. Okay, I wonder if knocking on the door does anything for us. No one is a hollowed out dark echo. No, okay, so we've managed to bump it up to 72% chance, which seems... Seems okay. Almost three quarters in our favour. Ah, we do it. Oh! <laughs> Ow, that was success. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. It's going to take one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. Okay. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? <laughs> what should we do? Smash into the door again and shout, Fuck it hurts! <laughs> okay, here we are, in the Bent back room. metal, broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Gaze upon me, stuff and despair. Anti-object task force. Let's have a look, look at that. What have we got? Temporary research bonus. Minus two pain threshold. It hurts. Hard to know what it does for us. We're almost finished with Ace's High, though. Um, so I think we'll leave that for now. And when we've done Aces High, we'll uh, switch to that. Oh, what's this? Oh. Smells like leather and sweat. A shot put ball. Ooh, it's worth quite a bit of money. I don't think we found anywhere to sell anything yet, have we? I don't think we could sell anything what at the uh, cigarette shop. Um, no idea, Kim, but my head hurts. My head hurts bad. You didn't have to run the door down, you know. No one's been here for ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. I wonder if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages. Yes, because it's closed. Now let's move on, shall we? Okay. Kim, not a great believer in the supernatural, obviously. Ooh, what do we do with this big weight? A barbell lies on the floor. The colour has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Okay, this is a legendary check, and we have 42% chance of doing it. I mean, it's a white check, so what's the worst that can happen? We, we, we failed it. <laughs> oh no, well, we hurt ourselves. We're getting a bit low on health, I might have to, um, to hoist it off the ground, use our little health thing there just dangerous. to get a bit back. Your hands slip with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. Fuck you, you stupid barbell. Oh no! Was it, was <laughs> At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. Okay, we're getting dangerous low on morale. Um, you know, another fail on something like that, and we're gonna 
We're back living under the bridge, throwing our poop at people. Um, is there a way out of here? I mean, supposedly the way to the fridge is through here. I'm not oh, the stairs here. Aha. I thought that was um, shelves in a cupboard, but uh, no. It's dark. And the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Flashlights go in hand? Yes, you might even call it a feature of the universe that you need to hold tools to use them. That makes so much sense. Right. Now let's get to it. Some areas are inaccessible without your flashlight. After you've acquired... Oh no, right, it's this, isn't it? Okay, so what have we got? Do you have the flashlight? Uh, holding on our right hand. Hmm, okay. It's good we can kind of direct it around at stuff. Shine it in Kim's face. Oh, I can't. Can't quite do that. Oh well. Okay, what have we got here? A stuffed bird of some kind? get in there? Okay, well, I think we have to walk around to it, so let's look at stuff as we come to it in turn. It's like a shabby, broken down office. Oh, money! That's great, actually. I think we've got enough for our uh, bed for the night now, which is pretty cool. No sleeping on the street for us. that what was in there. Oh, more money. This place is a treasure trove. Oh, 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 what are we thinking? Where are the clothes it used to display? Okay. Another door there. Got some stuff here. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. I'm These live, I think. pointy eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. One of the welkins towering among the rest appears to be different however okay we'll examine it's that one Vara Hamira, a high welkin his face white and scarred like cracked marble this is clearly a welkin supremacist the note says all non-welkin races will be purged um okay the Haldor, the Tuorg, the humans and even headless men all of them purged Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. <laughs> one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Why would anyone do Some this? Some people really like building a world, I think, even if it's just for a game. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Hey, well, this has been educational. Just look at those details. So much effort. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Like eggnog or morphine. A much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario. A desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. 
This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the market-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. The okay. handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, the biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Aces high. Oh, what's this? For the rest of the world, the Aces High is just a cool Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades, and those cargo pants could store tools for hot-fixing your aerostatic. Maybe you should ask him about this. Okay, so what was Hovercott? Did we get any bonuses for that? Mm. Okay, well we'll leave it for now. It does have some bonuses. Uh, I guess we'll do that. And I think we'll start internalising that one as well. Okay, so that'll do there for now. I guess we'll keep having a look through this room and see what else we've got. Oh, there's something here. What's this? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? But we are looking for a fridge, and we are pressed for time, so... On the other hand, it's not that I'm not interested mm. in abandoned radio computers. This is the Ream Civic radio computer, model RC5120, equipped with a felled mainframe. Turn it the on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. I'll have a look it's inside. empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Play. Nothing happens. Something's oh. missing. There's no tape in the player. Print. Nothing happens. Okay. Maybe it's something we can come back to. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. What are we looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. It must be an elaborate piece Simpson. of art. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Uh, we Looks can continue. Like a surveillance program. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. 
Who's Whoever playing? decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing. Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad. Okay. Nice. Good. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. Okay. Oh, have I talked to Kim yet? I keep trying to click on his speed. Okay. Dial. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Um, I think it's just a game, isn't it? Yes, that is the question. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. They were trying to make the first MMORPG. What a madness, he thinks, as a compliment. How are they doing Two that? Two call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people. Possibly divided into what do we think happened no to them? They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Anyone done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Gard, Messina, Konigstadt. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. Hmm. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... Yes, especially in here. The lieutenant looks around to the derelict room. The pipes howl, and a rat crosses the floor in front of your okay. feet. Let's keep moving. Ah, interesting. Okay. This wasn't the way we came in, was it? Oh, there's more stairs there. But I think there was another room back here, so let's quickly go and do that. And then we'll move and then we'll change levels. What have we got here? Steel rotor blades. Skis. Slipstream. What's this? Production schedule. Oh, okay. That's worth a bit of money as well. Um, but I think maybe that's something we can play on that computer. Let's uh, let's go and uh, try that out. Tiles on the cube are no, still insert small. Insert the production like schedule. A smooth draw. The filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Let's play it. Fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no! It was already glowing, and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien seal-like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint-Gedelaine. This is East Inflindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Okay, that's unexpected. Um, bu bu bum. Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalogue before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCR produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. Hmm. That's what the catalog well, we already kind of know what that is, but I guess we ask. Any other questions? Uh, are you a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. Oh. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now, please repeat. 
evade the production schedule. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East into Indian station. I work as a repeater at the East. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the river Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Now, please tell me the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean the glowing thing? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Uh, yeah. Good. Please repeat the password. Can you give me a hint? No. Oh. Is it my birthday? Still no. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder. Okay. I'm afraid we are not doing that. And now, can you please repeat the password? Okay, we don't know. Received. I will register. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Okay, well, we're not going to guess the password. Maybe we'll come back here later. Tiles on the cube are still smouldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. What happens if we press print? Nothing happens. Oh, okay. Well, we need to access it first, don't we? I'm not quite sure why. Maybe there's a reason for that that will become more obvious later. Um, but I think we'll leave it there for now. I feel like we've... Um, spend a little bit of time on this. When we come back we're going to proceed further into this abandoned building, up this set of stairs here perhaps, and uh, see what's on the next floor. So thanks very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then please do like the video and subscribe to the channel as well, which would be fantastic. And I hope to see you next time for more Disco Elysium. Bye for now.